For your first step, you need a stencil and a sheet of tracing paper. Make sure for the tracing paper you're tracing the outside of the stencil. We'll use the inside later. Don't try to trace the whole thing quickly because it's really thin. You'll have to hold down one part of it, trace a little bit, and then move your fingers to hold down a different part instead of being able to hold it in the middle and trace the whole thing at once. When you're designing your window, it doesn't have to be a picture of something. It could just be different shapes. They could be geometric shapes or they could be organic shapes. But make sure that your shapes aren't too small. Don't go too crazy intersecting lines and end up with something like this. If you want it to be a picture of something, start with very basic, big, open shapes, and then you can start to break those big shapes up into smaller shapes. When you get a design you like, draw it lightly on your tracing paper, that way it's easy to erase if you need to. Then color your design with marker. If you have a picture of something and you're worried about it all blending together, a good way to separate your picture from the background is to do one with cool colors and one with warm colors. So I'm using cool colors for my background and warm colors for my butterfly. And I don't want to see any careless coloring that looks like this. Next, you need a black sheet of paper and the same stencil you used before, but we're going to trace the inside of the stencil this time. Now we need to cut out our window without cutting into the side of the paper. So fold it in half and snip it in the middle. Then you can put your scissors through that slit and start to cut. Cut the window out of your tracing paper, leaving a small border. Trace the edge of the opening in your black paper with liquid glue. Make sure that your tracing paper is backwards and lay it on top of your window. Rearrange it if you need to. The glue is still wet so you can slide the window around if it doesn't quite fit. Then your last step is going to be to trace all of your borders with puff paint.
Notice how I'm resting the tip of the paint bottle on the paper. I'm not trying to hold it way up high. I'm also not squeezing the bottle very hard. You don't want too much to come out. 